Hey everyone, happy Friday. Today is December 28th. Welcome to this week's video update. Hope everybody had a great Christmas, great holiday. Uh, I don't know if, if, uh, if you guys are like me, these, those long holidays where the market's closed for three, four, or five days in a row. Uh, I don't know about you, but I get a little anxious. You know, I'm, I'm ready for them to turn the machines back on. So glad to, glad to be back, but it's also good to take some time off as well. Uh, before we jump into the alerts, just wanted to make mention of this week's Who Got Caught Being Hot in the Community. And this one, uh, this week goes to our friend from across the pond in Prague, Andre, congrats, buddy, uh, and also had a birthday this week, so happy birthday, and thank you so much for helping other traders in our community. If you haven't checked out uh, his post from earlier this week, uh, yesterday, Thursday, the 27th, he just, he, he, he's been trading for quite a while. He's tried out a lot of different trading services, and so he, he made some pretty detailed posts about his experiences over the years. So really helpful. I thought it was uh, really, really well uh, put together and, and thought out. So if you haven't checked that out, go do so in the community. And with that, let's jump into this week's alerts. So had a short week. We didn't do any trades on Monday, which was Christmas Eve. The market was open half day, uh, which some good volume ended up coming in. Uh, kind of near the close, but we we opted just to wait until after Christmas to do any trading. But we still got quite a few alerts in um, just in that in that shortened week. So let's start with Wednesday, and our first trade alert was in DIA, the Dow ETF. We've got a couple sets of short call verticals, and in this case, we are simply rolling down our strikes. With the with the market moving down, we were able to kind of book that credit and roll our strikes closer to the current price. In this case, we were already in February, so we just simply rolled our strikes down from the 246, 251 to the 225, 230. Stayed in February with a lot of time, 51 days to expiration. So let's take a look at DIA. Now, here, here's something else that I wanted to point out, just looking at the chart. So this was Christmas Eve here. So this was the largest drop in the market on a Christmas Eve ever, okay? So, uh, you know, it, kind of a record-setting day to the downside for for a Christmas Eve, right? No no uh, Santa rally this time. But then look what happened on the 26th, the day after Christmas. This was the largest one-day point move to the upside in the Dow in history, okay? So this, the, the reason I'm pointing this out is... This just goes to show you that you just you don't know what's going to happen, right? On on Christmas Eve and you know leading up to that, I mean we've, we've had a significant drop and it almost makes you think, wow, you know this market is crashing, this thing's going to keep going down. And then the very next day, two days, three days in a row, it just rips your face off to the upside. And and that's why it's so important and that's why we we always talk about we're not we're not making all of our adjustments. We're not placing all of our trades, even though it's it could be warranted to do so. We're not doing that all in one day. You know, we're spreading it out over multiple days, multiple weeks, multiple cycles, and and that's why it's important to do that because you just you don't know what's going to happen. And we saw that uh, a real clear picture of that over this last week. So here's where we are in DIA. So this is the one that we rolled with the alert. And since our roll, I mean, the market has has ripped higher, so it's it's already ripped out of our range here. So we're just looking for some more downside to to benefit that piece, but we're keeping this on for that short delta exposure. And here's the other piece that we have on, also in February, and you can see this is pretty close to where we rolled it. Uh, no P, no P and L profit or loss to this point on that piece. So. Just holding those for that short delta exposure. And by the way, where we're at right now with our overall short delta is we, we've got a little bit of short delta if we don't include our oil position. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to cherry pick and exclude certain things because oil certainly has been fairly correlated to the market. As the markets move down, oils move down. On days when the market bounces higher, a lot of times oil's moving higher. So we we don't want to exclude that, but 
we also want to take into consideration uh, you know, where we're at with everything. So we're actually a little bit long delta. Uh, if we include our oil, if we took the oil piece out, we would be actually a little bit short delta. So uh, I'm comfortable with where we are. We did add a little bit more short delta today to our overall portfolio, uh, which I'll get into on J and J. Um, you know, of course, I'd love to have more short delta because I, I think there is some more risk to the downside. But uh, we also don't know that, right? So we're just gonna we're gonna play it. We've seen a huge move down. We're getting a little bit of a bounce higher. So we'll continue to add a short delta. We're not gonna do it all in one day. But as we see opportunities to do so, we will continue to add some short delta in for that downside protection. So that's DIA. Next trade was a uh, closing trade in Netflix. So this is a short call vertical that uh, came down on uh, the day after Christmas. And, um, and we went ahead and booked that one, booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. That did take off some of our short delta, but we just thought it was a good idea to kind of, you got to book those profits. You don't want to get too greedy. And so that ended up being a good thing as Netflix did turn around and go higher uh, the rest of the week. So in hindsight, that's always, that, that was a good trade. Uh, and then next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in SMH, the semiconductor ETF. So we had a short strangle on there and we were getting down close to that 21 days to expiration. At that time, there was 23 days and price had breached our downside short strike. So what we did is we rolled down our calls and rolled out to February. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If we go to SMH. Uh, it's basically a straddle. So we rolled our calls down to the 85 strike. We already had the 85 put, rolled the whole thing out to February. So now, now we've got the 85 straddle in Feb. The other thing I mentioned on uh, this week's earlier video was, you know, these uh, these strikes, now they've gone to two and a half points wide, but at that time, they were, the only options were five point wide strikes. And so we were kind of limited to either the 85 or the 90. We ended up rolling up to the 80, rolling down to the 85 uh, in that case, and so you just got to kind of play the cards you're dealt and and use the strikes that are available at that time. So that's where we're at in SMH. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we closed out our short call vertical side of our iron condor. Price had moved down, breached the downside break even, so we closed that out, still holding that short put vertical side. So let's take a look at that. If we take a look at SPY, go to our Analyze tab. Now you can see with the last few days up move, this price has moved all the way back into range. And so now we are looking for a little bit more upside on that piece. And then if, if we do get it, we'll go ahead and close that one out. Book a profit on that Iron Condor overall. Excuse me. And, uh, and, and continue to manage as needed. Uh, now... Also, we had added a, another full iron condor centered around current price. Now you can see with the, current, uh, with the recent up move, now price is all the way up here, kind of in the upper range of that iron condor, uh, which is fine. I mean, that gives us a little bit of short delta, right? And so we're still well within range, nothing to do here. Implied volatility has gone up since then too. So we're down a little bit on the trade, but still well within range. So just going to continue to hold and manage that as needed. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in SPY. So that's the iron condor that I just showed. We opened that in February with 51 days to expiration. IV percentile at the time was 99. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in XRT. So we rolled our strangle in XRT from January to February. Uh, the calls had very little value left. You know, this, is our, this had already been adjusted once. And so... In this case, we went inverted, so we've got the 41 calls, 43 puts, the inverted strangle, and we're out in Feb. So I got a couple of questions on this, and, and this is a little bit confusing if it's your first time, but you know, if, if a market keeps moving down, you're just going to keep rolling your calls down, and in this case, we, get, we're, we rolled it down to the point now we're inverted by just a couple strikes. Uh, so we're just, you know, continuing to hold. Now prices bounce back, so we've made back some money here, and we'll just continue to manage this uh, as as we always do. So if 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 market if this market rips higher, you know, we might need to roll our puts up. 
If it continues lower, we may need to roll our calls down. If it stays in our range, we'll just continue to collect that theta and then end up booking a profit. So that is the name of the game there. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in the QQQ. So similar to DIA, we've got a couple sets of short call verticals. These were originally part of iron condors. We've continued to roll them for that short delta exposure. In this case, we were well over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So we just went ahead and rolled that down. Stayed in February with 15 days to expiration. So we did not roll out in time, just simply rolled our strikes closer. Went from 165, 170 down to 149, 154. So let's take a look at the Qs. So that is this one here. So similar to DIA, this kind of has bounced up out of our range now. So just looking for a little bit of downside to get back into range. And then we've also got our other piece here, which we've got a little bit of profit on. And same thing, just holding this for that short delta exposure, looking for some downside to benefit that piece. Next trade is a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So we have uh, this uh, iron condor price came down and breached our downside break even. So we closed out the untested side and we're still holding our put vertical side. Uh, we've also got another iron condor in IYR as well. So here's the full iron condor. You can see price is well within range here. It actually got down to a place where it's close. It, it had breached our break even a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Gave it a little bit more time, and now it's it ripped higher back into range here. So we're in, we're in good shape on that one. Here is the short put vertical from our other piece. So still looking for some upside to get back into range there. As we get closer to expiration, uh, we will either you know look to close this, and we probably won't roll because we don't want to extend duration on that long delta piece. But uh, you know, hopefully, if we can get a little bit of bounce back into range, might be able to close that and then continue to hold our iron condor in February. Next trade was a an opening position. We opened up, sold some premium in gold. In this case, I mentioned you could use iron condors or short strangles in either GLD or GC. We opted to use the futures. Uh, so we're sitting with a little bit of profit here. Still very centered. Uh, not Hasn't really moved much since we put it on up a little over 100 bucks at this point on the trade. But applied volatility, look, look, at, look at the credit that we received for just one contract. Max profit of over $1,300, $1,350. And that just, that just shows you that you know when implied volatility gets super high, you just collect such a much bigger credit on these trades. If we look at GLD to take a look at where the implied volatility is now, is dropping a little bit today, but right around, you know, up around that 100 area on the IV percentile, IV rank when we put this on. So it uh, just continues to, to stay nice and high across the board, giving us good opportunities to sell premium. And we'll look for additional opportunities into next week to, to add some new positions as well. Um, next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in EWW. So this was one that we had in January and we had, we were to the point where we were over 50% of max profit but the problem was the February options were not available. They did become available now. And so we went ahead and rolled that out, locked in that credit, and continued to manage the trade. We kept our strikes the same, just the 41 calls, 42 puts. So we are one strike inverted. So we just went ahead and rolled that with the same strikes, continued to stay inverted. If we look at EWW, uh, it it's, you know, had that big move, which is why we had to adjust. But now it's really consolidated giving us a chance to uh, to make back some of that. So we are we are almost we're basically pretty close to break even on the trade overall after uh, after all adjustments. And again, look at the I mean, look at that massive move. And for us to have been able to get back to break even in that short period of time, I mean that just that just again it it proves the the, the methodology, the strategy of staying mechanical with your adjustments. Uh, because again, you know, I know, I know when price is really moving, like we've seen in a lot of symbols, you almost think it's never going to end, right? It's just going to keep going in that direction, but nothing goes in one direction forever. And that's why this methodology is so powerful. And the reason you have to stay small so that you can stay mechanical and make those adjustments and weather a big one directional move, because eventually price is going to reverse or start to consolidate, and either of those is fine. And we can get back to profits if we just 
stay with the program and stay mechanical. So that's where we're at on EWW. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in our friend Natty Gas. So what we did is we've got two different uh, adjusted short strangles in Natty Gas. Uh, in this case, we just rolled one of them out. We weren't down to that 21 days to expiration. Uh, we still had a decent amount of time, but but the March options were to the point where they're at 60 days. So getting in anywhere from 30 to 60 days is good. So just to diversify our time, we went ahead and rolled one of our strangles out to March with 60 days. And we adjusted our calls a little bit from, uh, uh, excuse me, we and, and this was pointed out in the community, so this is incorrect. We did not adjust our calls. We adjusted our puts from 405 to 3.7. Uh, so we're still inverted, but we opted just to adjust those puts, not calls, uh, just to get uh, a little bit more credit. So here's where we stand in Natty Gas. So this is the, uh, let's go back to that one. This is the one we rolled. Uh, so you could see so well within range. We've actually made up of almost $500 since that roll, just since yesterday. And so just, just waiting for some more time to pass, for more, some more theta to decay. If we take a look at the charts, I mean, just crazy move. I mean, we had this huge, massive move up. Price consolidated a little bit. Now it's reversed. It's almost back to where it was uh, before that huge move, which is crazy, crazy, crazy move. So, uh, but again, the key the reason we were able to stay in this trade is because we stayed small enough to withstand these huge volatile moves, and now we're just waiting for time to pass to continue to collect that theta. Hopefully, price plays nice and just continues to consolidate, and if it does, we'll roll this for a couple cycles and be back in the money. Uh, the other piece that we have is the four-strike straddle, and so on this one, we could actually use a little bit of up movement. And we're, we're going we're gonna to look to roll this one out as we get closer to 21 days to expiration. We may even do it next week. Here's the, here's the game plan. Price is right here. And if we get a decent move up and, you know, more towards the center and, and we, you know, get some more profit back in this one, uh, then we'll probably roll before that 21 days. If it just kind of hangs out here, we may just kind of wait and, and see what happens. Obviously, if it continues moving down, we may need to roll our calls down, collect some more credit, and then roll out in time. So we'll just see what happens. Obviously, optimal would be for price to move a little bit higher, and then we would roll that out, continue to collect that credit, continue to play that time decay game in Natty Gas. Next trade was an opening trade in J&J. &J. We did this one this morning on Friday, and this was just to add some short delta into our portfolio. In a, in a previous video, I think it was, I think it was last week, we mentioned, you know, some some different symbols we were looking at to add short delta. J and J just uh, looks like a good candidate. I had it had that big move down. It's kind of bounced higher uh, the last few days, and so just looking for an entry point to get a potential continuation to the downside. And so that's what we're looking for in J and J. So we just sold a short call vertical here, looking for some downside movement in the stock to benefit that trade. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in wheat, so forward slash ZW. And what we did here is uh, with these back-to-back -back alerts here, we opened a new uh, wheat iron condor out in March with 56 days to expiration. And then we were over 40% of max profit on our February one that had 28 days. So we went ahead and booked that one. So book that one, open a new one in the next cycle. So if we take a look at wheat... Here's the one that zeroed out. That's the one we closed. So let me just uncheck those. And then this is the one we've got. So pretty dead centered. We just put that on this morning. And so just going to continue to wait, see if we can get some consolidation in price. And if so, we'll go ahead and book this one at the normal 30 to 40% of max profit. Uh, we're pretty close to even on our wheat trade overall. We've been in this a while, just kind of battling this back and forth. But I don't, I don't mind that because it's just giving us that exposure to a to a commodity that's not correlated to stocks or bonds or net gas or oil. It's just another exposure outside of those. So I like having at least one grain on basically at all times. In this case, we're, we're just continuing to uh, hang on to our wheat position and add and book profits, add to book profits until we get back. And, and so that's what we're doing there. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions here. Oil, 
We've got these two pieces on our 54, 56, and prices is right here. So just looking for some more upside and oil to benefit that. Um, what a move on the 26, right? The, the market was up, had its biggest day up, and oil was up over 10% that day, uh, which was, I mean, great for our position, but big, big move there too. So if we can just get a little bit of a bounce higher here and kind of consolidate in this range, that would be ideal. Obviously, the market always doesn't do what you want it to. So if it does continue lower, we will continue to play the game by rolling our calls down. If we take a look at, at how much value is left in our calls, you can see we got we got quite a bit. So um, not not looking to make any adjustments at this point. Also, we've got 48 days left in that March cycle. So a lot of time left. So just really playing the waiting game here in oil. And then our other piece is the 53 call, 63 and a half put, uh, where you can see kind of similar story. I mean, prices hanging out down here, just could use some upside movement to benefit that oil trade. ES, we've got this long put vertical that we've got on for short delta exposure. We've got some profit here, just looking for some more downside to benefit that. I mentioned gold, I mentioned natty gas, bonds got a short strangle on here just playing the waiting game here looking for some more theta to decay some IV contraction in bonds I mentioned wheat we've got Apple we've got this long put vertical here for that short Delta exposure so just looking for some more downside in Apple to benefit that DIA EWW EWZ we've got a short strangle on here pretty close to where we put it on dead centered in our strangle so just playing the waiting game there in Facebook We've got a short strangle on here. We've, we're in the profit on this trade. Uh, just looking for some more time to pass, some more theta to decay before we book this one. Uh, if we look at the charts here, yeah, the, the earnings announcement date is, hasn't even come out yet. So we've got some time here. So hopefully price can kind of consolidate between now and then. And I'd love to be out before the earnings announcement, but we'll see what happens. We may hold it through depending on where we're at. We'll just have to see. FXI, the Chinese large cap ETF. We've got two butterflies on here. Here is our one in February, and this is our put butterfly. You can see price is well within range here, and this is one we put on after price kind of broke out of the range on our call butterfly. So just looking for some upside movement in this one on our January fly. IWM, uh, we've got two pieces here, kind of similar to SPY. We've got price that came down and uh, breached our, our break even. So we took off the untested side. We took off the call vertical side, still holding this put vertical, looking for a little bit of upside to benefit that. If it moves back up into range to a point and we can book a profit on that, we will. If not, we'll just kind of hold this for now. If it moves too much lower, you know, if we get to a point where it has a very low probability of getting back in a range, we may just close it out, but we'll see what happens. And then our other full iron condor we've got in February in IWM. You can see it's dead center, just waiting for some more time to pass there. IYR, I mentioned J and J. Lulu, our good friends, Lulu Lemon. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, just looking for some downside to benefit that. This is one we put on for some short delta exposure. We were at a point where we were at or near 50% of max profit. We opted to hold it. Uh, just to keep some of that short delta exposure on. Obviously, in hindsight, we wish we would have booked it. I think some of you mentioned in the community that you did go ahead and book that. So good job on that. Uh, but we're just, uh, you know, if we get a continuation to the downside, we'll be good here. QQQ, I mentioned, SMH, SPY, XLK, also another short delta position we've got on. You can see price is still within range here. Just looking for some downside to benefit that. And then I mentioned XRT. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Look forward to a full week of trading next week. Have a great one, everybody.